sponsored by Brilliant. Will the upcoming iPhone 12 finally, finally see Apple ditch the lightning connector like it's a headphone jack and go all in on USB-C? Hit subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos in this series. Then riddle me this. Apple started switching over the Mac with the 12 inch MacBook in 2015. They only gave it one port, but that one port was glorious USB-C, the way nature and nerds intended. Then, the very next year, in 2016, Apple switched the entire MacBook Pro lineup to USB-C as well, the entire lineup, but left the iPhone on lightning. And how could they? How could they have the Mac and iPhone on different connectors? Who cares if it had been that way since the 30 pin dock connector killed Firewire on the iPod in OT3? We need it, nay, we demanded a better, brighter future. In 2017, the iPhone 10 came with an all new, all modern design, the perfect opportunity for an even more modern connector to go with it. But no. In 2018, the iPad Pro switched to USB-C. So what if it was meant to be a laptop alternative? We wanted the same alternative for the iPhone as well. But still no. Then in 2019, the iPhone itself went Pro. Blessed Pro which like the MacBook Pro and iPad Pro just had to mean USB-C Pro too. No? Well, turns out no, still no. Biggest troll of the decade no. So now, now, on the eve of the iPhone 12 and potentially the next big redesign, dare we nerds hope, dare we nerds dream that Apple will finally, finally ditch lightning for USB-C. I'm Rene Ritchie and this is lightning versus USB-C. Back around 2010, Apple was already planning the iPhone 5, and it was gonna be thin. So thin that the then current connector, the good old fashioned 30 pin dock, would just no longer fit inside. So Apple needed something new. Now, their technology team was already working with Intel and others on what would become USB-C. But because it was gonna be an open standard, it was gonna take a long time to finalize a really long time, and Apple decided they just could not wait. So Apple took many of the same principles as USB-C, made the actual plug a little smaller by putting the pins on the outside instead of the inside, and came up with Lightning, a name that neatly paired against the Thunderbolt protocol they'd been working on with Intel for the Mac as well. By September of 2012, Lightning was ready to ship. The spec for USB-C, by contrast, wasn't even finalized until August of 2014, almost two years later. And the first USB-C device, Apple's own 12-inch MacBook, wasn't even announced until March of 2015, two and a half years after Lightning shipped for the iPhone, basically forever in the age of gadgets. Now, connector transitions are a big deal. Apple moved the iPod from Firewire to dock in April of 2003, but it was such a nascent industry back then that only the early adopters were really affected. When Apple moved the iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch to Lightning in the fall of 2012, almost a decade later, it was much, much more painful for far, far more people. Many of whom had already bought a bunch of dock cables and accessories over the years that, suddenly no longer fit their new phones. And to make matters worse, Apple completely failed to have adapters and cables available at launch, never mind in the box, forcing not just early adopters, but a lot of regular people doing regular upgrades to wait days and weeks before they could even plug into their existing chargers and their audio systems at home, at work, in the car. The anger was real. Let me know if you remember it in the comments. So the idea of making another connector transition just three years later with the iPhone 6S in the fall of 2015 was just a non-starter. I mean, Lightning offered a ton of advantages over the 30 pin dock, including, sure, being smaller, but also being pure digital, so Apple wouldn't have to constantly hack the pins anymore, and being symmetrical, so you didn't have to try and plug it in, fail, flip it over, try again, fail again, flip it over again, and then succeed, maybe. USB-C was pretty much the same. The only difference it offered back then, being a standard, was as much advantage as disadvantage. See, while Apple could control lightning cables and accessories to the point where any customer could be relatively certain anything they bought would just work, the initial USB-C rollout was a nightmare by comparison, with confusing and poor quality cables flooding the market, 
to the point that the entire internet suckled themselves to the Amazon reviews of a single lone Google engineer who bought and tested every one of them, plus his nerdy heart, because for way too long a time, it was the only way of knowing what was safe to buy and what might just burn it all down. So back then, if you even asked mainstream customers to go through yet another transition and buy yet another set of new adapters, especially ones as potentially problematic as USB-C was at the time, they'd cut you and no court in the world would convict them. By the time Lightning came along, Apple really wasn't thinking about unifying connectors, like at all. They were thinking about optimizing them. See, Lightning really was meant for mobile devices. It wasn't fast, topping out at USB 2.0 speeds and only ever going to USB 3.0 for special use cases like the camera kit. It didn't drive a lot of power either, just five watts with the iPhone adapter and 13 watts with the iPad adapter, which was fine for small devices with limited file systems, accessories, and relatively tiny batteries that, if subjected to the heat of high watt, high speed charging would just hemorrhage battery health. Because yeah, there is no magic. Power management is way better now than it was then, but with the various kinds of high speed charging, you are literally trading current convenience for future capacity. That focus on charging small devices is why Apple eventually did expand Lightning to everything from the terrific Magic Trackpad to the still ever so awkward Magic Mouse to the Apple Watch Dock almost nobody uses, the Siri remote for Apple TV almost nobody likes, the AirPods pretty much everyone likes, the EarPods included in the box for now, and most everything beats. The Mac though, with a traditional file system, a vast array of peripherals, including mass storage devices with power requirements, much bigger batteries, much higher power draw, and a tendency to be plugged in more often and for longer periods of time, simply needed more than Lightning could provide. And while, yeah, sure, proprietary connectors are great for quality control, they're terrible for interoperability. And when you're not iPhone scale, but Mac scale, you need to work with everything the PC market has to offer, from printers to those external drives. Which is why Apple also kept working on USB-C, with the Standards Committee and Thunderbolt with Intel because that was a connector that would let the Mac grow to support the currently fastest USB 3.1 Gen 2 and Thunderbolt 3 speeds and 96 watt 16 inch MacBook Pro power adapter. Even if, yes, beyond the early quality control issues, it still made USB-C like four times more confusing when it came out, figuring out which cables only supported USB-C, which ones supported PD or power delivery for high level charging, and which supported Thunderbolt 3 for faster data speeds. Because what good would it be to finally have one plug to rule them all unless all the cables behind them were different? The original iPad Pro, announced in September of 2015, had a lightning connector, just like every iPad since 2012. In October of 2018 though, Apple gave the iPad Pro a modern redesign that included changing the lightning connector to, say it with me, USB-C. It was part of a much greater change within Apple though, a conceptual and philosophical change that took the iPad Pro from being more of an alternative to laptops to being more of a laptop alternative. In other words, something to do a few of the same jobs better to something to do most of the same jobs, just differently and it included other changes, like having its operating system renamed iPadOS, getting a files app, and most recently, full-on trackpad support. Basically, all the finalies for all the traditional laptop users. And all of that required a more laptop-style connector. In other words, it required a USB-C connector, too now, if you include the charging-only port on the brand new Magic Keyboard. Now, personally, I wish Apple had done the exact same thing with the iPhone, but I'm a nerd. For all the reasons I just went over, from not wanting to force another big connector change on the massive mainstream customer base, not just after dock to lightning, but after losing the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack to lightning, to keeping things simple for that massive mainstream customer base, to not believing the iPhone needs Mac style throughput or power delivery. Sure. Apple gets a trickle of additional revenue from licensing Lightning through the MFI or made for iPhone program. And all money is good money, but it's not like they license it to anything big like other phone companies or appliance companies. So it ends up being a drop in the bucket compared to the umpteen billions of dollars the iPhone brings in just quarter after quarter. I mean, Apple probably blows more than the MiFi profits on chamfering edges, jet blacking finishes, or making glossy versus matte camera bumps every year.
but it does give Apple something they value even more than money, control. Now, again, I'd love it if the iPhone 12 Pro shipped with USB-C instead of Lightning, just like the iPad Pro does. Apple has pro and consumer brands for almost every product now, just like Steve Jobs' original four quadrant grid set up lo those many years ago. So stick with Lightning on the consumer end, so most people don't have to replace their existing cables or accessories, but switch to USB-C on the pro end, where after decades of serial and parallel and USB and Firewire 400 and 800, VGA, DVI, DisplayPort, Thunderbolts up to three, Pros are just so used to sucking up just exactly that kind of pain and living with basically all the dongles forever. Especially for pro devices, being able to transfer data faster and charge faster over a wire just makes absolutely the kind of sense that does, which is also probably, poetically, why we'll just never see it. I mean, never say never, but never. Step by step, year by year, Apple seems to be intentionally inextricably moving us all towards a wireless world. Remote CD on the original MacBook Air way back in 2008. Since then, AirPlay, AirDrop, AirPod, basically all the Air things and all the continuity features. In general, removing buttons and ports while reducing some portion of the customer base to a burning fury of malice and hate also reduces points of potential hardware failure. It's why HTC ditched the headphone jack in the original Android phone long before courage was even a glimmer in Apple's eye, and why most companies have ditched it long since. It's also why most of those exact same companies are working on ditching other buttons and ports too, using things like squeezable sides and capacitive buttons instead, just like Apple virtualized the home button starting with the iPhone 7. Sure, you can make ports water resistant, but you can't force people to dry them off before plugging electrical things into them, which can still cause corrosion, shorts, and other problems. It's why the Apple Watch's mini lightning port is sealed away and hidden in the band groove, and the latest Apple TV's USB-C port is buried behind the ethernet jack. Of course, that just creates other huge problems. For example, how are we supposed to restore or recover our devices if something goes wrong and we can't just plug them into a computer? Having to take or send your watch or TV box in for a technician to do it is hella inconvenient and annoying. Having to take or send something as critical as your phone in, well, that's just hella not gonna happen. And internet restore or recovery for devices is just really, really hard. So hard, it doesn't seem like Apple or Google can even ship it as a feature yet. So going completely portless probably isn't an option, at least not yet, and not even by the time Lightning's decade is up in 2020. And that's why there are rumors of smart connectors coming to the iPhone. Originally introduced with the iPad Pro back in 2015 and updated with the redesign in 2018, it's flat mounted and has just three pins, power, data, and ground. Sure, it can't do everything a lightning connector can do, much less a USB-C connector, but in a world where the majority of functionality, including everyday charging and data transfer, are increasingly being handed over to induction and wireless, the smart connector can be there in a pinch for physical charging for people who want or need it, restore and recovery, and attaching to adapters for existing accessories, including audio at home, in the office, and in cars. Because yeah, take away all the wired CarPlay connectors in existing cars and we're right back to the all the people cutting you. But assuming everything goes right, everyone who hates lightning and wants to kill it just to watch it die might well get their wish, maybe as soon as next year or the decade anniversary of the year after. But irony of all ironies, without getting USB-C instead. Hey, you know what they say about being careful what you wish for. Even though I personally would prefer smart connectors on the regular iPhones and USB-C on the Pro models, because Pro models. So hopefully Apple can do the math and all this and come up with the best answer for everyone. If not, Brilliant can help. They've got this new complete math course library where you can learn or brush up on all the fundamentals, probability, algebra, calculus, trigonometry, differential equations, geometry, for school, for work, for fun, for figuring out USB-C for everyone. Seriously. See, Brilliant's brilliance is taking complex concepts and breaking them up into bite-sized, understandable chunks. You start by having fun with their interactive puzzles, but over time, what you can accomplish is just absolutely amazing. To learn more, go to brilliant.org slash Renee Ritchie and sign up for free, absolutely free. Be one of the first 200 people, and you can also level up 
with 20% off the annual premium subscription. Thanks, Brilliant, and thanks to all of you for your support. That's my guess as to how Lightning will end. Lost not to fire and USB-C, but to the smart connector and the eventual true wireless future. So hit like, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and if you have, hit share and send this video to a couple or a dozen people you love. It really helps out the channel. Then hit up the comments and let me know. What ports do you want to see on the iPhone 12 and future iPhones? Lightning, USB-C, smart, or just none at all? Thanks for watching and for more videos explaining just everything about Apple. Check out this playlist right here or here and see you next video.